we're living in unprecedented times. We're living in a time that has challenges that no one has anticipated. No one even really knows exactly how to handle what's coming at us. Life as we knew it 30 days ago is so different than what it is right now. Because of this coronavirus crisis, I'm seeing people react in three different ways. I'm seeing people be panicked and begin to hoard food and supplies and toilet paper and weapons because of this impending doom that they are sensing. I'm also watching people react in a passive manner where they're not doing anything, they're not following any guidelines, they don't think that it can happen to them, and they don't think they can pass it to other people. So I'm seeing people be panicked, and I'm seeing people be passive. But I'm also watching another group of people be prepared, following federal, state, local guidelines, social distancing, hand washing, proper hygiene. And I'm also watching people turn to God for their faith. People are really worried right now. They're worried about their family. They're worried about their finances. They're worried about their physical health. And they're worried about their future. And if that's you this morning, if you're worried about one or all of those areas, I want to welcome you. You're in safe company because I've had all of those same worries as well. And one of the things I want to say is I don't believe you're watching this morning by accident. I believe that God wants you to hear something today that will change your entire life. My goal for you today is for us to discover a practical side of Christianity that brings about the relevance of the resurrection, the relevance of this Easter story, the relevance of the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a way that we can touch, that we can feel, a way that is alive inside of us that we can carry it around, not just today, but all week, all month, and all year. I believe that you wouldn't even be watching today unless you were feeling a tug toward Him. You wouldn't be watching today if you thought you had all the answers, but you know that there's someone out there who does. And man, if that's you today, I've got some good news. You see, the gospel, it's a message about relationship. It's a relationship with a God that loves you so much that he gave us all the ability and the freedom to make decisions, either for him or not for him. The entire life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was motivated Not out of guilt, but out of love. Out of God's love for his most prized possession, his most prized creation, which is me and you. The gospel is a message that's relevant, not just for some future hope, maybe, but it's relevant for right here, right now. It's a message of relevance that can change everything about who you are, about how you are, about what you see and what you say. It's a message that can change how you live and how you walk through the trials of today. And you see, it's also a message that's real. The gospel is a messy, transparent, authentic message. The whole Bible is filled with real people doing real life. Real people doing real life, making real mistakes going through real trials, asking real questions, and making real decisions. Jesus was also a real person who lived real life. And he came and he lived and he died. And he defeated death to become the blueprint for how we walk through difficult times together. One of the things I found out over the course of my life is there is nothing more powerful in life to a person who is struggling than to hear from somebody else Hey, I struggled too and I made it through. And guess what? I made it through and so can you. I made it through my bad decisions. So can you. I made it through my financial problems. So can you. I made it through my relational issues. So can you. There's power in the story of a triumph. We can all look back at times in our life where we went through something tough 
and somebody reached out and gave us an encouraging word and talked to us about their experiences. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, John, who was exiled to the island of Patmos um, while he was writing this letter, he's describing a war in chapter 12, verse 11. He's having a vision of a war of good versus evil. And in this verse, he says, They, being believers, triumphed over the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So what had happened is these believers who didn't shrink from death, they had already seen a guy defeat death, so they weren't scared. Let me restate that verse a different way. They triumphed over him by the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that reality eliminated their fear of death. And it gave them a boldness to share the gospel against all odds. And I want to talk to you about how we've been able to overcome obstacles in our lives because we believe in Jesus Christ. And today we're going to talk throughout this program about a real piece of human history. I believe it was the apex. We're going to talk about a God that loves us so much that he sent his son a piece of himself to the earth so that we could get a good picture of who and how God was. Yes, it was to send him to forgive us of our sins, but it was also so that we could see the visible image of an invisible God. And my question to you today is, where are you turning during this pandemic? Are you panicked? Are you passive? Or are you prepared? Are you drawing from fear and being very reactive? Or are you drawing near to God and letting Him inform your decisions and your actions during this very critical time? Because one of the things I know for sure is in a crisis, in a time of defeat, in a time of agony, you never stay the same. You either run one direction or the other. You either run toward God or away from Him. Some people turn to other people in these times of crisis. Our governor, Andy Bashir, has done a great job leading the state over the course of the last few weeks and months with the coronavirus issue. But I wouldn't encourage you to look to him as your source. Matter of fact, your family members aren't your source. Your spouse isn't your source. They're just a person walking alongside of you. God is your ultimate source. I'm also watching people turn to their finances. So if their bank account is good, then they're okay. And if it's bad, they're in despair. That's just your resource. It isn't your source. I've watched people turn to substances such as drugs and alcohol to try to cope with anxiety and emotional stress. And I can assure you that ends in a bottomless pit of despair and agony. Those things I just mentioned, other people, finances, substances, careers, they're guaranteed to let you down because they were never created to fulfill all of your needs. So for just a moment, if you're listening today, I want you to take a moment to think back with me. I want you to think back to the lowest point in your entire life. I want you to go back and think when it was the scariest for you and your family. Reflect back on when life was the toughest that it's ever been. So every person watching, please think back with me. And for some of you, you're thinking back years ago. For me, I'm thinking back six years ago. I was right at the edge of divorce. I was in financial ruin. I was nearly homeless, and I had broken and fractured every relationship in my life. Anybody that had ever gotten close to me, I'd either hurt or pushed away. And one of the things I can assure you today is everything about my life is different because God took what looked like was too far gone, what looked like was out of control, and He took that and made a beautiful message of His grace and his forgiveness, and his restoration. And so as you're thinking, some of you are thinking back to months ago. Some of you are thinking back weeks ago. 
And some of you are thinking about right now. You're saying, man, this is the toughest it's ever been. Some people have just recently been laid off, lost a job, lost a loved one, don't know what's going to be next. And what God has been asking me to do is he's been asking all of us to start thinking about these tough times and asking a few questions. How am I going to make it through? How did I make it through? What's going to keep me going? Not only do we celebrate the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, not only do we celebrate that victory, but we also celebrate the fact that God loved us so much that he sent a piece of himself, his son, into the earth to suffer alongside of us. I believe that the, the picture of Christ living and suffering as, as a human being is a perfect picture of how he can look at us and he can say, I've been there too, and I made it through. In Mark chapter 15, verse 34, we see Jesus on the cross. And Mark says, then at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice and said, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Have you ever felt abandoned before? Have you ever wondered why that God was allowing situations to happen in your life? I want to reassure you, He doesn't get flustered by your questions. Matter of fact, God wants a real, authentic conversation between His sons and His daughters and himself. I want to encourage you today that he's never not been there. No matter how bad it's been, no matter where you've looked and not sure you've seen him, he's been working in your life the entire time. He rose, and that means you can rise above the circumstances of your life. One of the things I love about scripture is it promises us that life is not going to be a bed of roses. It promises us that there will be trials and that these trials can be opportunities to perfect our faith. Even Jesus asked if this cup should pass. He said, but if it's not my will, then Father, I'll do your will. He even had to walk through tough times and so can you. Please remember that he felt like he had been forsaken but God was right there all along. Please remember that you are created in God's image with the Christian blueprint inside of your DNA. You were created with Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection inside of your bones. Once again, you were made in His image. And you have this tenacity to overcome even these trials right now. Because God put that tenacity inside of you even before you were in your mother's womb. He's known you that long. All you have to do is realize it. It's as easy as changing your mind and turning toward God and understanding that He can help you make it through against all odds. You've got his DNA in the core of your being. And now I want to leave you with some scripture from Luke chapter 24. And this is out of the Passion Translation. And the header here says the resurrection of Jesus. So I, I want us to, be, to leave and to celebrate this Easter Sunday morning because it's a very, very big deal. Verse 1 says, Very early that Sunday morning, the women made their way to the tomb, carrying the spices they had prepared. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, Jesus' mother. Arriving at the tomb, they discovered that the huge stone was, that was covering the entrance had been rolled aside. So they went in to look. But the tomb was empty. The body of Jesus was gone. They stood there stunned and perplexed. And suddenly two men in dazzling white robes, shining like lightning, appeared above them. Terrified, the women fell to the ground on their faces. The men in white said to them, Why would you look for the living one in a tomb? He's not here, for he is risen. Have you forgotten what he said to you while he was still in Galilee? 
The Son of Man is destined to be handed over to sinful men to be nailed on a cross, and on the third day he will rise again. All at once they remembered his words, leaving the tomb. They went to break the news to the eleven and to all the others. They wanted to tell them what they had seen and heard. When the disciples heard the testimony of the women, it made no sense. And they were unable to believe what they heard. But then Peter jumped up and ran the entire distance to the tomb to see for himself. Stooping down, he looked inside and discovered that it was empty. There was only the linen sheet lying in place. Staggered by this, he walked away and wondered what it meant. And if you're out there today and you're wondering what this all means, what it means is that you can live a life of peace and abundance and joy no matter what your external circumstances are. And so as Shannon and the worship team uh, prepare for this last song um, of response, um, I want to encourage you that today would be a great day for you to make a decision to follow Christ. We've got people that are staffing our the comments section, the, vir- the virtual hospitality team, and they're there to take your prayer request, to reach out in text or a phone call, And to help you walk through what the next steps of the Christian journey are. If you want to refocus your relationship on Christ, we're here for you. And if you just have a need right now, whether that be financial need, emotional need, relational need, please reach out. We may not be able to fix your problem, but I can promise you this. We can point you to the one who can. God, you're so good and we're so thankful for you. We're thankful for this ability uh, to connect with one another on Easter. We're thankful for technology that it allows us to stay together even though we're far apart. God, we're thankful that, that you loved us so much that you sent your son to die as us, to die in our place so that we could live and live abundantly. God, I pray for everyone within earshot of this message today, God that you protect them, that you guide them, that you allow them to draw near to you. And once again, our hearts just overflow with gratitude. We're so thankful that you're good and that you love us. We're so thankful that you look like Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.